So we went over bastard hip and valleys with equal overhangs and just how and how far they swing off the corner. And you recall the hip swings to the steep side and the plate has to raise, whereas the valley swings to the shallow side and sits on the lower plate. Well, how much does a plate have to raise? We've we established how far the hip has to go off of the corner based on the mitre rule, but how much does the plate have to raise? And if you do have to raise the plate, you don't want to raise it uh, from the corner over. You want to know exactly how far uh, the hip is going to swing off the corner, so that's where you can begin raising your plate. Or if you want to build the wall that way, you could you could have it step in the middle, depending on the, the difference in plate you know plate heights. So here I have a schematic of a 512 and a 912 pitch rafter laid on top of each other. The first one starting 12 inches, rising five. And this is the rafter length for a 12 inch run. Second one, 12 inch run, nine inch rise. This is the rafter length for uh, a 12 inch run for a 912. And the difference between the two is four inches. So that's how much you raise your plate. If it was a 24 inch overhang, you would double it. That would be eight inches. If it was an 18 inch overhang, it would be one and a half times four, which would be a six inch plate raise. Now, if it's a 24 inch overhang, and you were you plate had to raise eight inches, clearly you're gonna to want to stand your wall eight inches higher. If it's only four inches, you may just rip down a four by and run it across the top of the existing wall height and SDS underneath it. It depends on the carpenter, but that's how you achieve it. Pretty straightforward.